We are here at SummerSlam 1999. We have been on fire the past three months, apparently, according to the ratings of the shows, with uh, thir last 13 shows having 89 or better ratings. Our main events have been on fire. Stone Cold and Triple H feud is an instant classic. I'm expecting maybe 100 rating in the match itself. I'm really excited for it. The and that feud is uh, pretty much for you Fairweather fans or people who are just watching out of boredom. Triple H and Stone Cold is Triple H proving himself to be the man. Stone Cold is the man. He's been defending the title just about nonstop since WrestleMania 15. Triple H defeated The Rock. He went through, you know, X-Pac, DX, The Rock to get here. He's been out to prove himself that he is the cornerstone of the industry. And this is like Triple H proving himself or Stone Cold being the champ. Vince is uh, not a point, not a key point in the feud right now. In this show, Vince will not appear. Also on the card, we have Rock versus Chris Candido. Chris Candido, yes, I, for some of you guys who don't watch, is a massive star. We just had to re-sign him, or we just offered to re-sign him. W, me and WCW got in bidding war. I I wanted to pay him around forty thousand a month, but it's up to sixty-five. I wanted to spend extra money just to keep him. And WCW is bidding against me. That feud is uh Chris Candido and Kurt Hennig are the uh, team perfect. The Chris Candido is a perfect protege of Kurt Hennig, and uh, pretty much, you know, he's been out to prove that he's the man. Like Triple H is out to prove. And The Rock has been, you know, he's out to get the title. He's an egomaniac. Chris Candida and Triple H are very similar now. I think about it. They just, you know, Candida has Hernig. He's perfect. He claims to be perfect, all that shit. And The Rock is an egomaniac. And Mankind is a key factor in a feud where, you know, Mankind has been trying to get The Rock to be his ally. The Rock tells him to F off. Candida has his ally. And we're going to see that come to a head tonight. Candida and Xbox have been feuding with Abyss. An Undertaker for a while in the Ministry of Darkness, who would not consist of APA, Undertaker, Abyss, Paul Bear, no, uh, who is Viscera or other people like that. Pretty much this uh, feud is X Pac and Undertaker's eyes make Kane look weak. Undertaker wants him to be a monster, Abyss is his partner, and that's going to be the match. Uh, it's hard to explain these feuds, they've been going on for a while. And, uh, you know, they're all pretty easy to understand. I mean, Kane vs. Undertaker, standard feud. Definitely going to use Team X Pac. Uh, Rock vs. Chris Candido. It's just the two guys who aren't the guys are trying to get there. It's like Triple H vs. The Rock in a sense of like 1998 when they had the eye ladder match. We're looking for that while we're adding in the Rock and Sock connection forming. Triple H vs. Stone Cold. My build has been a lot better than the build they had in real life. The build they had in real life was weird as hell. I dare you go back and look and tell me it wasn't. So let's start off the show and uh, avoid spoilers and pausing it. So the show itself starts off with Taz vs. D.O. Brown. Taz defeats D.O. Brown with the Taz mission, making defense number six of his European title. He uh, Taz has been like undefeated up until, I think, King of the Ring, where he finally lost to Owen Hart. And he has been on fire. He's been... Pulling out great matches, not great, but you know, solid matches with guys like D'Lo Brown, Bob Hawley. Uh, I'm curious to see where I go with his character from now, because uh, I don't have any long-term plans for Taz at, until WrestleMania. I don't have any plans for a European title at WrestleMania right now, so he could hold the title for a while. I might even, I'm thinking about playing with him turning heel even, because you know he's such a good heel. He's such, I don't, I'm kind of underutilizing him, but he's in a spot where he's shining. If that makes any sense. Great match here. I'm uh, not great, but good enough match. Probably Dealer Brown's best match of his career singles wise. Following that, we are uh, backstage where Mankind is attacked by Team Perfect. They beat the shit out of Mankind. Uh, just put the boots to him. And this is a set up a future angle. End of show. Oh, oh, sorry. After that, we get Red Dog Matista cut a promo. Uh, not a great rating. I didn't give it much time. Three minutes. And uh, I'm so I'm I don't know what to do with these two because uh, my tag division is super deep right now. If you you'll know from the show, um, and you know they don't have good chemistry as partners. They were put together because Billy Gunn died in the game, in game, and I put Dave Batista in there in DX instead of uh, Billy. Since you know Billy died, 
I also just noticed my show's in Puerto Rico, which I'm not happy about because it's always worse ratings for me. But it is what it is. All right, so let's start it off with uh, tables match. The Dudley boys get the uh, tables match victory here because it's their gimmick. And let's put them over another solid match. 78, I will take. I just like having that green. And then obviously when we get towards the higher main events, I want it better. Story here was Dudley's put uh, Rabbit Dog through a table to try to make a name for himself. Rabbit Dog the, were the top dogs, no pun intended, of the uh, company in 98 and tag division wise. Dudley's are out to make a name for himself, putting people through tables and their heels at the moment. Alright, so here it is. Here's Chris Jericho's iconic debut. 93 rating. Pretty much what I wanted. The Rock is in the ring. He comes out to the ring. He's not dressed to compete. He grabs a mic, you know, the announcers put over the fact that he's not even supposed to be here right now. He's not even supposed to be in the ring right now. And he says, Chris Candida, you know what? I'm sick of your shit. I want to beat your ass right now. Screw the match. Come out here and fight me like a man. You know, he's he says, I'm going to put my boots so far up your ass and you're going to taste the gum I stepped in earlier. Something cheesy like that. The Rock will do whatever The Rock does. You know, the, uh, the Jericho debut... The Jericho, uh, you know, clock countdown shows up, and he comes out, and he says he's here to save the WWF from uh, jackasses like The Rock. They have a back and forth where Jericho is really putting over, and he's an egomaniac. We see he got a very good rating for it. And then, you know, The Rock does, who are you? It doesn't matter who you are. And, you know, Chris Jericho walks away. He says he's here. You know, they just do back and forth until The Rock says, if you smell it, he's cooking. Then as soon as he says that, Candy and Hennig pop out from the crowd or under the ring or something, just beat up the rock, put boots to him. Chris Jericho stays on the stage just watching like he don't give a shit. And it's pretty much the rock and Jericho dynamic we had in the debut, except it ends with Chris Candida beating up the rock to put heat on their match and so forth. So uh I, I was thinking about just doing the generic or not generic, the actual rock and Jericho debut next night. But I figured this is a good way to get it done and get the show flowing still. Let me know what you think about it. Uh, you could read this if you want. It's just pretty much me saying or uh, writing down what I said. And let's go to the next match. Which is, whoo-wee! Eddie Guerrero versus Owen Hart. Eddie defeats Owen Hart with a frog splash. I think he got a bump from having the hot angle right before. Good feud. Wasn't that long. Probably could have had a lot better match if it was longer. 96 rating. Was not expecting that. I said last month that I'm putting Owen in a heart to steal the show, and he very well may have. I didn't. I gave the match a regular, gave it a little more time. Really happy with this match. Into following that, we go to backstage where Gold Dust is with his girlfriend Terry Ronalds, his fiance, when Luna Vachon and Gangrel pop up and beat the shit out of Gold Dust and Terry. This is uh, Luna's uh, debut. She is Gangrel's significant other, and we're just having. You know, lovers at war here. Just a uh, way to flow the show with uh, different angles, getting guys in there who wouldn't appear in the show otherwise. Following that, we go the Hardy Boys versus the Marvelous Ones. Not the greatest match, like I said. Uh, the Marvelous Ones become our new WWF Tag Team World Champions. I think this is their third reign? Third or fourth reign. Uh, the Marvelous Ones are Mark Mara and Mike Barton. They took over from New Age Outlaws as the top dogs and divisions when Billy Gunn died. They've really been the centerpiece of the division, really. Rabbit Dog did have their time, but Marvelous One's always been key players in the tag division and will stay that way until I feel it is, you know, done. Hardy Boys, their tag team title run started in their debut and they defeated the Accolades to win the titles in a shocking debut. Just pretty much like, what the hell? Like, no one expected, like, these jobbers are going to beat the accolades or then tag champs. And then they actually do. And then they lose it now to Marvelous Ones. Uh, Hardy Boys, not great in the mic. S decent in the ring. Spot Monkeys pretty much at this point. And um, not who ready to be the leaders of tag division. Definitely have the Marvelous Ones, Dudley Boys, Edge and Christian, Accolades, Kane and X-Pac, Undertaker, Abyss, uh, Rock and Sock, Team Perfect. See, uh, Godfather Mark Henry, the player in the pimp, Rabid Dog, Landstorm Matt Bloom, they have great chemistry. We're deep in the tag division. That's 10 tag teams I just named. Following that, Jeff Hardy. I'm thinking of sending to rehab at some point. 
I don't know. Maybe after WrestleMania 16. Following that, we get a Landstorm versus Val Venus. Gave this uh, opportunity to uh, have the steal the show. Uh, Val Venus becomes our new Intercontinental Champion here. I decided not to do any, you know, taunt hype package before it just flow into the match because I do that too much. You know, match to match happens a lot in WWF and in the pay per views at this time, so I figured I might as well do it here and not waste time on the show because I forgot to set it to four hours, so the show is still three hours long. Val Venus becomes our new Intercontinental Champion. I think this is his first or second reign. Uh, Lance Storm defeated our Intercontinental Champion. Was it Gold Dust? I want to say, yeah, it was Gold Dust. Uh, a couple months back on Raw, he hasn't defended. He defended the title twice. That's my fault. He didn't defend it more. But with SmackDown, I think we're gonna see a lot more title defenses and stuff like that. Following that, we get a backstage where uh, Kurt Hennig is cutting the promo on behalf of Chris Candido on The Rock. Just a little transition here. Back from ma two matches to backstage. Short little segments why it's raining isn't great. And then we get to an interview with Kane and Xbox where they cut a promo in Abyss and Undertaker before their match. And we go to the match. Pretty damn good match. If I, wow. I was not expecting this at all. So uh, first off, Abyss and Undertaker have excellent chemistry team together. I did not put that in the mod. I did not put that in the game. That's organic. I didn't even know. I thought it was. I was just hoping they would have like no real specific chemistry at all. And I'm really happy with the excellent chemistry. X Pac and Kane. They have excellent chemistry. I believe that was in the mod. It's because it makes sense. Jr. and Jerry Lawler, the goats, and then Undertaker and Paul Bear. Obviously, have great chemistry. Uh, this was only 14 minutes long because Abyss isn't the most over guy, and he isn't that great in the ring. Could have had a uh, higher rating, but I'm very happy with the 92 rating. Man, we had Owen steal the show with Eddie, and now we have this. Another great match. This is honestly shaping up to be a great card. Following that, we have The Rock. You know, he's hurt now. They were, like, putting over in other matches. Like, is Rock even going to compete tonight? He got beat up pretty good by Chris Candida and Karnatic. And, you know, Rock is limping here. He says, I will take on the that no good son of a bitch. And he, he walks out to the ring. They have their match. Not the most fantastic match. I was hoping for a higher rating for these two. Is what it is. They're young guys. Rock and Chris Candido. Match ends with Rock defeating Chris Candido with the Rock bottom. Uh, clean victory. No interference from Kern Hennig. Or maybe he did. You know, he got hit by Chris. So if I did have to give you a finish, it would be, you know, Kern Hennig's on the, uh, on the apron, distracting the ref. Rock is behind the ref, you know, getting ready for the rock bottom. Chris runs in, clothes lines, rock, rock, ducks it, hits the the ref moves, hits Candido or something, or hits Hennig, and then Candido turns around, rock bottom, one, two, three. So let me say that again. You know, the rock is in current Hennig's face. Chris Candido is running the clothes line, rock, ducks it, Candido hits Hennig, and then rock bottom. The ref pins a one two three. We just I just changed that there for without the ref until the one two three. Uh, like I said, eighty nine rating. Really, I'm happy with that. And then following the match, Mankind comes out and makes a save from uh, Candido and Kern Hennig, beating down The Rock. And this, The Rock and Mankind finally shake hands. The Rock raises Mankind's arm, and this finally is like the where The Rock says, "Okay, I'm part of. I'm with Mankind now," and I think that. They never had that moment. It was this is just a little more organic. We've been building up for a month of mankind asking the Rock to be his friend, and the Rock finally says, "Okay, I will be your friend." All right. Following this, we go straight into a video package. Triple H and Stone Cold, a nerf feud. Uh, like I said on SmackDown, it would be very similar. We gave this one some time. It would be you know Triple H at WrestleMania turning heel on Xbox, then beating Xbox, then beating The Rock to become number one contender to beating Mankind a couple weeks ago in SmackDown. And then in in the while, he'd be cutting, like they'd have an interview where he's saying how he's the new man in the company. Austin was the top dog, but now Triple H is. And then in the meantime, and they'd cut to, you know, Stone Cold at WrestleMania defeating The Rock twice. And then again at Backlash, then defeating Owen Hart, Chris Candido, Umaga, Ken Shamrock, Brian Pillman. Brian Pillman suspended because he couldn't beat the Rock or Stone Cold for the title. 
and we're just putting over that Stone Cold has been a great champion and it's about to come to the end of the uh, video package and the video package ends with them two facing off stare, stare down alright so I'm expecting the 100 rating here I'm really hoping for it so let's all take a deep breath Ah, oh, shit damn it I will take it though here we have Stone Cold versus Triple H and the match ends how it should have happened in real life with Triple H defeating Stone Cold Steve Austin to become our new WWF World Heavyweight Champion in SummerSlam 1999 instead of Mankind defeating Stone Cold to lose to Triple H the next night. Triple H gets that iconic first win against Stone Cold at uh, SummerSlam. Clean win. I really wish... Oh, I'm salty. Damn it, Stone Cold. Ah, oh, this could have been 100. I'm so I'm so disappointed, and it's like I'm disappointed in the sense that you know, it just wasn't. I was hoping for that 100 rating, it is what it is. But yeah, this match, hell of a match, great match, great card. I'm expecting like a 98 rating, 97. That is fantastic. Uh, the battle royal is just nothing. I just wanted to get guys on the show. From top to bottom, this is very well. This is our best card we ever had. I will admit that this is better than WrestleMania 15. Has to be. You know, we have. What's our lowest match? See, it make back in the day, it didn't say position, said match. We have an 89. What's our lowest? 81. I think the Marvelous Ones versus the Hardy Boys is 74. When 74 is your lowest match and your average is around 89, I will take that. Like, definitely the latter half of the show. Owen and Eddie stole the show. Obviously, I'm really happy with that. They're with the speech. I'm gonna thank them and then praise for a great performance. And then we're gonna give Triple H his due. And then we get performance. I'm ha very happy with that. I can't be any more happier with that show except just that hundred rating. Uh, can't always win with the hundred. You can't always get a hundred rating. So that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching. I think we're about to resign Chris Candida. Or no, Jeff Hardy. He's a junkie as always. Uh, excuse me. Yep. Okay. Uh oh. What is this? Uh oh. Whoa, oh, shit. This is a game changer. I'm not. Wow. Wow. I, I can't beat that. I can't. Looks like I'm losing Chris Candida. So they want, I can't go six years. I just don't believe in them that much. Even though, wow, even, wow. I'm shocked. So they really, they really uh, gave it to me. But he's seriously considering both offers. So maybe he comes to me. I'm sticking to my offer here. Just figured, wow, I was not expecting that. Okay, um, you know, tag teams are annoyed over Jeff. And then Edge is, you know, getting complimented once again. Same with Matt Hardy. Edge and Matt Hardy getting complimented again. Everyone has good taste. Very excited to see what happens with uh, Chris Candida. Was not expecting that whatsoever. And then I, w I honestly wasn't. So thank you guys for watching. The uh, pay-per-view rating is low because I didn't, you know, have enough, what's it called? I didn't put another thing on for people to order it. But, wow, I was not expecting Chris Candy. That's a major, if he signs with them, that that's going to make some WrestleMania changes. I had a pretty good plan with him at WrestleMania. And if they sign him, I think I'm going to go after Rey Mysterio to get him back. Uh, stick to, Stay tuned for what's going to happen Monday Night Raw. I think Chris Jericho is going to debut this week in the ring. We're going to see where we're going to go from here until WrestleMania. Until then, thank you guys for watching. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like it. Tell me about this, like, Chris Candida. I was not expecting that at all. That's the f first six-year deal. I mean, he's really been doing fantastic. I really hope he doesn't sign with them. But I can't compete with uh, six-year, 70000 Let's do math, all right. 70,000 times 12. 70,000 times 12, that's 840,000 times six years. That's what, we'll just say nine. 
that's almost four mil that's around four million dollars that they're willing to commit to Chris Candido and wow I can't believe they're willing to do that well if I lose them I lose them I honestly am shocked thank you guys for watching stick with it next episode will be a great one another the streak continues of 89 or better and I hope you guys uh, stick around later peace